Welcome to the GCN Racing News Show. This week, Remco Evenepoel continues to live up to the highest of expectations, taking two stage wins and the GC at the Vuelta Algarve. We've also got the Vuelta Andalusia, the Tour Cyclist International du Var et des Alpes Maritimes, Sepmana Cyclista Valenciana, the Atlas Mountain Race, the final cyclocross of the season, and some exciting news from us here at GCN about our future racing coverage. <laughs> First up, the Volta at Algarve, which had one of the classiest start lists that the race has seen in its 46th edition history. Nibali, Thomas, Kwiatkowski, Dennis, Mollema, Jakobsen, Van Avermaet, Viviani, Van der Poel, Trentin, Lopez, Gilbert, and Remco Evenepoel. The 20-year-old won stage two, the hardest stage of this year's race, with this attack from a group containing some of the best climbers in the world. He and his team then defended the yellow jersey through to the final day's time trial and then triumphed in that stage over world time trial champion Rowan Dennis of Team Ineos. That result means that so far this season, Evenepoel has ridden two stage races and won two stage races. In total, he has already amassed five wins in 2020, which is more than any other rider and five times more than the whole of Team Ineos. Now, as I said in yesterday's stage highlights here on GCN Racing, we're kind of running out of superlatives for this young man. Much is expected of him, and he has so far more than lived up to that expectation. The scary thing is, is that he said he's not even on top form yet this year. Now, let's put all of this into some kind of perspective. We shouldn't forget that the winner of this very race last year, Tade Pugacha, was only four months older at the time than Evan Apoel is today. So, the Belgian is not alone in being a bright young talent, far from it in fact, and one of my conclusions from all of this is that it's rarely been a more exciting time to be an armchair fan of pro cycling. I, for one, am absolutely loving it. De Koenig Quickstep had also taken the first stage of the race, won in a bunch sprint by Fabio Jakobsen, the Dutch national champion. They were looking to make it three from three on Friday, but were trumped by another up and coming star, big sprinter Case Bowl of Team Sunweb. And what a win it was. According to Peloton Insights over on Twitter, he averaged over 1100 watts for the final 30 seconds of the stage and peaked at 1550. Miguel Angel Lopez took the hilltop finish on the penultimate day, but for me, his most impressive ride came yesterday. He managed to finish fifth in the individual time trial, a performance far above my expectations of him, and I'd imagine probably above his own too. Now his team, Astana, have got a new bike supplier this year in the form of the Italian brand Biglia. Not sure if that had anything to do with it, but he can take a lot of confidence from that going into the bigger races and grand tours this year. Before I go on, I want to tell you all about the plans that we've got for racing coverage here at GCN over the coming months and years. I cannot even begin to tell you how excited and proud I am about them. So, live racing and highlights are going to be coming very soon to the GCN app. Uh, we've been working incredibly hard on the app, but also in acquiring race rights to many of the biggest pro cycling events in the world, both men's and women's. But this is not just about taking live racing and plunking it on the app for you to watch. We will have that, but we also want to bring the racing fan everything else that they could possibly want or need in one place. So, brief and in-depth written previews, video previews, rider stats, in-race stats, bike and component information, GPX files of the races, expert analysis, and the ability to cast the race to your TV and use your phone app as your information hub. These features will be rolled out as and when they're ready, so don't expect to see them straight away, but we are working flat out to get them out there and ready for you to use as soon as we possibly can. So, if you haven't yet downloaded the GCN app, make sure you do so. You can find it on the Google Play and app stores. Uh, just search for GCN and it should come straight up for you. Stay tuned for the big racing update which will be coming over the next few weeks. And before I finish with this, as ever, this is about you. We will always welcome your feedback on how to improve. Uh, we're determined to make this the best product for bike racing for fans the world over. In fact, if you've got any suggestions or requests right now, uh, please let us know. You can leave them in the comment section below this video. Now, I'm going to go back to Remco at Evenepoel now. His exploits over what has been a short career so far have led to the inevitable comparisons to his compatriot Eddie Merckx, who is widely regarded as the greatest cyclist of all time. Now I know many of you are going to roll your eyes at the prospect, and so did I once, but given Remco's recent results, there are some interesting comparisons to be made. 
Of course, we know that the racing landscape has changed dramatically since Eddie Merckx rode his first pro race in April of 1965, when he was 19 years and 10 months old, to the day when Evenepoel first rode for De Koenig in January of last year, two days after his 19th birthday. And despite Evenepoel's achievements so far, it will be impossible to emulate what Merckx did, because cycling is just different now. Riders focus much more on specific races, and Evenepoel simply won't be able to spread himself across the season in the way that Merckx and his rivals were expected to do so back then. Nevertheless, this perhaps makes what Evenepoel has done even more impressive. There was an expectation in the 1960s that a cyclist could be good at all disciplines, whereas Evenepoel is bucking the trend in that regard, having won time trials and mountain stages already. As this tweet from cycling historian and writer Herbie Sykes alludes to, those people making facile comparisons between Remco and Eddie are way off. Eddie couldn't ride a TT at 20 and hadn't yet seen a proper mountain. He wasn't nearly this good. And Herbie is not wrong. Mertz got his first win before Evenepoel did, but other than that, whether you disagree with the premise of comparing the two or not, Evenepoel has outstripped Merck so far. Because Evenepoel was nearly a year younger than Merck when they both set off professionally, rather than directly compare ages though, we have taken a look at how many months into their career they both hit a few significant milestones. Now what I think is most striking is Evenepoel's ability to time trial. Merckx's first win against the clock came three and a half years into his career, whereas Evenepoel was winning them virtually straight away. And as prolific as Merckx was, the fact that Evenepoel has actually racked up more wins at this stage, 10 now in total, is really rather mind-boggling. It was four years into Merckx's career before he even considered attempting to win a Grand Tour, that being the 1968 Giro d'Italia, and so it seems rather fitting that it will also be the Giro where we get to see Evenepoel try and do the same thing in a few months' time. And I, for one, cannot wait to see what he's capable of over the course of a three-week Grand Tour. Now before we continue on, a quick look at what we've got coming up on the channel over the next week. So we will have daily highlights of the UAE Tour worldwide, which this year looks to be something of a Sprinters World Championships. Plus, at the weekend we've got our first taste of the cobbles, Omloop Het Newsblad and Kuna Brussels Kuna in Belgium. We'll have highlights of both of those races right here on GCN Racing, or if you're in Europe, you can watch live coverage over on Eurosport, with commentary from me and Magnus Pakstedt. I can't wait for those couple classics, I've got to say. Speaking of which, this week's racing poll on the GCN app is about your favourite classics. Which are you most looking forward to out of Strada Bianca, the Tour of Flanders and Paris-Roubaix? There's a link to that poll in the description just below this video. And make sure you also comment under the poll with the reason why you're most excited about your chosen race. I'll be back with the results this time next week. Right, uh, back to the week's racing now, and across the border from Portugal, in Spain, we had the Vuelta Andalusia, formerly known as the Ruta del Sol. It marked the first race of the season for Jakob Fulsang, who appears to have trained pretty well over the winter months. He won stage one, having gone on the attack with Mikel Landa and easily beaten him to the line. He then won stage three after Dylan Turner didn't turn when he needed to turn, and then came second on the final two stages. Consistency which saw him win the overall classification for the second year in succession, and this time by almost a minute. The Australian Jack Haig of Mitchton Scott finished runner-up overall, also taking a win on the penultimate stage, whilst the final day's time trial was won by Dylan Churns, his first professional victory in that discipline. Third overall on the general classification went to Mikel Lander. He was making his debut for the Bahrain McLaren team, and in true Lander style, he looked incredible on the climbs, and less credible in the time trial. Meanwhile, over at the UAE Tour, it is effectively like the Sprinters World Championships. Never before have we seen Grunewagen, Bennett, Ackerman, Ewan and Gaviria all in the same race together. At least that was until yesterday for stage one. Now, as you would expect, the finale was fast and hectic, in part because the stage leading up to that point had been very easy indeed, so everyone ex was extremely fresh. None more so, it seems, than Pascal Ackerman. He took the first of what we expect to be four bunt sprint finishes in the race. Uh, on the day, he edged out Caleb Ewan in second, Rudy Barbier, who continues to impress this year, in third, and a very fast finish in Dylan Gruenewegen, who'd found himself out of position and coming from a long way back. Sam Bennett of the Koenig Quickstep was also absent. Uh, his team leadout was uncharacteristically out of position, and one of his leadout men, Mikael Morkel, was a little bit naughty in getting in the way of Fernando Gaviria on the run to the line. That race will continue today with a stage which finishes up the short but very steep Hatter Dam. Uh, that won last year by Caleb Ewan. 
Back to Europe now and the Tour Cycliste Internationale du Var et des Alpes Maritimes. Never get tired of saying that. Actually, I do. Uh, why couldn't it just stay as a Tour Haut Var? Anyway, it turned out to be the Nairo Quintana show again. Stage one was won by Anthony Perez, he giving Cofidis their second win of the season so far. But the GC was effectively decided on stage two, which finished at the top of the Col d'Ez. There, Quintana dominated, coming home 40 seconds ahead of everybody else and taking the race lead. He and his team defended that lead on the final day, coming home in a group with Roman Bardet and Richie Port. And that, in fact, was the order of the final podium. That final stage was won by Julian Bernard of Trek Segafredo. What it means is that Arkea Samsic now have taken more wins in 2020 than they did in the whole of 2019, which has got to be good for your confidence, isn't it? Uh, speaking of which, here is how things are looking so far in 2020 in terms of the teams. De Kuhn and Quickstep, as you might expect, top it with 12 wins already, which is ahead even of their spectacular 2019 season. UAE Team Emirates sits second with 10 wins so far. EF Pro Cycling have had a great start. They sit on eight, whilst Arkea, Samzik, Astana and Mitchton Scott have six each. So too do Trek Segafredo if you count Ciccone's win at the Trofeo La Guelia, where he was riding for the Italian national team. So the only World Tour team yet to get off the mark are CCC, although that could well change at the opening weekend. On that subject, last week you were voting on which team had the most reason to be happy with the start to their season. 41% of you over on the GCN app voted for EF Pro Cycling, whilst 34% went with Arkea Samsic. Although maybe that's changed now, you can let us know down below. As for the riders, you've guessed it, it's Remco Evenepoel who tops the table. He's one win ahead of Quintana, who's got four, whilst Bauhaus, Fulsan, Gaviria, Higita, Hindley, Milano and Pogaccia have three apiece. Moving on, Olympic champion Anna van der Breggen has kicked off her 2020 season in great style by taking a stage and the GC at the four-stage Setmana Ciclista Valenciana. Katusha Bigler topped and tailed the race with stage wins for Emma Norsgaard Jorgensen, who sprinted to victory from a reduced group on stage one, and Leah Thomas, who took the final stage into Villarreal ahead of Katie Hall and Mavi Garcia. Van der Breggen set up her GC victory with an attack on the mountainous stage two. After being perfectly set up by her Bulls Dorman's teammates, she caught and passed solo leader, Swiss champion Marla Rusa, with a little over 36 k to go before soloing home in that trademark style that we've all come to know and love. Stage three went to Astana's Lisbeth Salander ahead of British rider Lizzie Holden. Now, the cyclocross season drew to a conclusion at the weekend. We'd like to thank every single one of you for your support over the winter. We've thoroughly enjoyed bringing you most of the biggest races here on GCN Racing. Uh, Tone Arts took the men's race in Leuven in one of the most dramatic finales that we saw all season. Lars van der Haar unclipped at the start of the three-up sprint, and a few moments later, so did his teammate Arts. However, the World Cup winner still managed to find the power to outsprint a very disappointed Michael van Turenhout. Over in the women's race, Denise Betsema pretty much led from start to finish and take the win. Moving on to the Atlas Mountain race, which we began reporting on last week, uh, that concluded last week in Morocco. Uh, there couldn't have been a more apt name for the winner of the women's event. Jenny Tuff finished the event in six days, three hours and 13 minutes. In the men's, it was Sofiana Sahili who'd been leading as we recorded last week's show, and he just did not relent. It took him just three days, 21 hours and 50 minutes to cover the 1,145 kilometers, an average of around 300 k's a day over some extremely rugged terrain. He took just two hours and 15 minutes of sleep over that time, which is perhaps not something we should be glorifying. Anyway, taking second after a strong effort to catch the Healy was friend of the channel, James Hayden. In other news, Egan Bernal became the first cyclist to win a prestigious Laureus World Sports Award since Lance Armstrong. Uh, he got that for breakthrough of the year after his win at the Tour de France back in 2019. Now, Flanders Classics, organisers of many of the biggest cobbled races in Belgium, are making a big effort to bridge the gap in women's cycling. They've got a new sponsor, plans for equal prize money in the men's and women's races, and the addition of a women's shelter prize. So, a big round of applause to KPMG for stepping in as the major sponsor to try and help make that happen. The UCI have been forced to postpone three Chinese races due to the coronavirus, one of which is the Tour of Chongming Island. That is a race which is a part of the Women's World Tour and it leaves a big gap in the calendar for them. With the Tour of California also cancelled this year, it means there won't be a Women's World Tour race between Liège-Bastogne-Liège, which comes at the end of April, and the Women's Tour here in Britain at the start of June. 
Rafa have continued their support of the sport by coming to the rescue of the Lincoln Grand Prix here in the UK. One of, if not the biggest one day races we have, it was under threat due to increasing costs and a lack of sponsorship, so well done to Rafa for that. Right, that is all for this week's racing news show. Don't forget to head to the App Store or Google Play Store to download the GCN app and let us know what you want to see from the racing part of it. I'll be back next week with the UAE Tour and the first couple of classics, which I can't wait for. I'll see you then. Sorry, on top of that. Proud, how proud I am. Uh, back then, he was 19 years and 10 months. Oh, sakes. Lindley, Milano and Pugacar have three apiece. Pugacar? Pugacar. Uh, Olympic champion. I've run out of room again. His professional bike race, sorry mate.